Welcome to our live for today. It is Unstoppable Entrepreneur, episode number one. I'm super excited to share this with you. Now, one of the main reasons that I wanted to do this was I wasn't and I haven't been consistent with doing Facebook Live, obviously, and you know, be, having them show up on a, on a daily basis or a regular weekly basis. So I know that you guys have so many emails that hit your inbox, you have so many other people doing so many Facebook Lives, there is so much going on in your life that I kind of thought, well, if we were to make this at least a regular occurrence, then you can kind of make the choice and the decision whether or not you attend this live rather than getting the, um, you know, like the three minute, uh, good morning, gosh, it's really hard to see from here, hi Ainsley. It's, um, you know, most people, and I know that I do this a lot, it, it's more of a, about a five minute warning. You know, we're going live in five minutes, jump on. So that's a big part of why I really wanted to do this. Another big part of why I wanted to do this, number one, <clears throat> it kind of gives us some structure to be able to work through. It gives you some time and some space to think about any questions that you might have, it gives you some time and space to consider uh, like things that you might want to share or whatever else that it is that comes up. So that's a couple of things that I wanted to share with you. Now, I guess my, I think this is a really awesome opportunity for some of you who haven't been uh, around my stuff before, you're not aware of, of kind of how I operate. So number one, the way that you are going to get the absolute best out of any of these shows or any of these lives is by interacting. So, you know, I'm, I'm human. Let me know that you can hear me. Let me know that you've got me, that it's making sense and interact, guys. Leave questions. If there is stuff that you've got that you need answered, then put it in. And I'm going to be testing. We haven't had the, the Facebook, oh, I haven't had the Facebook Live for desktop roll out yet and it's it's infuriating let me tell you that I'm, I'm going to be working on some different ways to hopefully be able to see the uh, the comments come through on here so that there we go so that I can make sure that I can actually see them because without my glasses on it's actually really hard to see so welcome welcome now a big part of what I wanted to share with you guys today is a little bit about my evolution and my story to end up where I am now, like seven, seven years down the track. And let me tell you, sometimes those seven years feel like they have gone past in about a, an absolute millisecond. And other times those seven years feel like, really feel like I've gone through about, I don't know, like 25 iterations. These comments are not working on here about 25 iterations and, and several lifetimes actually over the last seven years. And I guess some of the stuff that I really wanted to share with you today was around really, really getting started, okay? Because I know for the people that I speak to, okay, excellent. I'm glad that you guys can hear us. Okay, awesome, thank you. Again, really hard to see from here. I can't really see your comments, so I'll make sure that I'll um, I kind of check in on them as we sort of go through. So a big part, I guess, of why I do what I do, and the main reason that I do this is not only for me, but also for my family, yeah? So that we've got the lifestyle, we can have some flexibility, being able to provide really awesome quality life and, and amazing experiences. Like I don't want them to have to want for anything really without being spoiled because there is a line there. But I guess for me, a big part of, of the evolution for me where with where I am now has been constantly, well, it's, it's, evo it's evolution, right? It's evolving. And so where I started isn't even remotely close to where I am now. So I remember in, oh golly, it might have been around 2005, 2006, I think. And we were out at one of our, at, at, somewhere in Adelaide at, at a shopping center and I noticed that there were some jewelry stands in the middle. You know, those ones that used to sell like $10 jewelry and stuff like that. And I was like, what a great idea. Now, we live in a tiny, tiny, 
believe me, it's tiny, tiny little country town in the middle of nowhere in country Victoria. We're in a town called Mildura. And I noticed these jewelry stands. I'm like, wow, that'd be really awesome to do something here. And I'm like, how can I, how can I really pull that off? How could I do something? I was working for uh, one of the major banks in Australia. So I was working for Westpac at the time and I'd been working for them since I was about 19 years old. So spring chicken into corporate banking and, and I mean, I loved it, right? I absolutely, I loved my job. I loved my clients. I, I loved what I did and, and I was really good at it. But it was kind of like there was something missing. And what I realized, and, and I mean, now that I know what I know now, what I was looking for was something that was, you know, kind of really mine that I could wholly and solely completely own in the way that I was doing my job, but in it, like being, being mine. So having control over the amount of money that you make, having control over your time. Now, what happened was I, I, I started importing this jewelry and selling it at our local markets. I started wholesaling it around the country and started jewelry parties and, you know, really was looking at different ways of having some fun, making some extra cash and, and that kind of thing. So that was a whole bunch of fun. Now, from there, we had, I had one of my old managers at work actually was made redundant and she went and did a life coaching course and I went and stayed down with her in Melbourne for a weekend and she was telling me about these courses that she was doing and I was just like, oh, wow, like mind blown. It was like there is so much more potential than I'd ever really, like that I'd ever really even been aware of. So I was like, wow, this is really cool. So. The things that I really want you to be hearing, guys, as I'm sort of stepping you through these stories, as I'm, as I'm taking you through all of this, is what are the signs here? You know, what are the signs for you? How are you feeling doing what it is that you're doing? Are you looking for a better way? Are you looking for a different way? Are you looking for a way of really getting what it is that you want? Okay. So that's what I want you to be thinking about in the background, particularly if you if you haven't started yet, or if you're thinking about starting, or if you're already started but maybe things aren't going how they want them, how you want them to go. Now, that sounds a little bright. I'm just going to move back a little bit. So that was kind of a really big insight for me into what was possible. Yeah, and into this whole other world that's out there. I mean, my auntie had done life coaching. My Uncle had done a whole bunch of stuff. My, my family, my parents had always been to different seminars. But for me, I didn't, I hadn't, I hadn't had the ability to kind of go, oh yeah, you know, I could really do something with that. And it got to the point where I decided that I wanted to start growing and building and, and doing more. And, and I had my son and he ended up being in hospital for a week. And I'm like, oh, oh hell no. Like this has to... I've, I've got to stop. Like I, I've gone back to work and I was like, nah, I've, I've got to take some more time off. So I ended up going back on maternity leave and started growing the jewelry business a bit more, taught myself how to build websites. I had a Facebook page. I started playing with ads, started playing with groups and events and, and this, that, and the other. And this is, you know, this is early, early on. But what that all started to do is I'm like, okay, I can see how much more scope there is and, and how much more opportunity there is for, for me to be able to get out and do more and also for other people to be able to get out and do more. So I've gone and done this styling course and, and learned how to be a styling branding coach. Now, again, it's another really big pivotal part of, of my story and my evolution because I had again a, a huge insight into human behavior and I started becoming intensely curious about how people think, how they process their information, how we can use that to help people in their marketing and selling themselves on stage or on videos or on blogs and at the end of the day you know, having, having so much more confidence within themselves to front up on camera. Now, 
the, uh, like I, I sent an email and I'm, I, I put a post out, um, don't know if you guys have seen it, a little bit about some of you know my history. And I mean, I, I, it was a huge transformation for me. I wouldn't go into a designer store for fear of, you know, um, you know how some people, like I, I felt like somebody would look at me and I would turn into a pillar of salt. Like that was how I felt. I didn't feel like I belonged. I didn't feel like I was good enough to be in these stores. Like regardless of how much money I did or didn't have, I felt really judged. And I mean, I know now that that was all my shit, but back then it was a huge thing. So. I guess like that was when that curiosity really started to kick in. And then I started to develop more started to develop more of a muscle around marketing and how I would communicate and get clients from Facebook and people started asking more about, you know, about all of that. So the clues along the way for me have been always, you know, people have always said, "Oh, you're so inspiring and you're so motivating and you know, in the past, I'd be like, oh, that sounds very much like I'm shooting my own trumpet. And, you know, I, I think perhaps it, it's, it's a good thing to talk about what it is that you're really good at and what your natural strengths are, right? I mean, if you guys have got things that, that are really, if people are like, oh my God, like you're so, you're so amazing, you're so unstoppable, you're so resilient, then there are going to be some clues around what it is that you perhaps should be doing or some things that you could be doing. Now, I just want to have a quick look and see what the comments are because I can't, I really can't see through here. Uh, awesome. Thanks, Rebecca. Awesome, Jess. Oh, it is super early in WA. You're right. I'm totally right. Oh my God, that reflection is a little astounding. Hang on. There we go. That's a bit better. All right, so I guess like that's that's some things that you can be considering as you're going along, right? Now, let me know, is this making sense, guys? As I said, the way that you guys are gonna get the most out of this is by being interactive. Let me know that this is making sense and that this is stuff that you're curious about hearing. All right, so I guess the next part about all of this, and so many people are like, oh, I just don't even know. Oh, awesome, thank you. I thought that was a bit of fluff flying across the, um, across <laughs> I can nearly catch it. That's really funny. Um, the, the thing that a lot of people say is that like they, I wanna have my own business, but I don't know what that is. I know that I wanna be working for myself, but I just don't know how to make that happen, right? That That's a big part of, conversations that I have all the time. And I think the thing with that is there are so many, I mean, we're really lucky, right? We're really blessed and really lucky because there are so, so many opportunities. There are so many things, but here's the thing. In order for you to get moving, you just need to pick one thing. Pick one thing. One thing that you think that you're going to love, right? And Things might change and things might evolve and that's great because, you know, that that's growth, right? So you may start off, for example, there, there are so many opportunities with within multi-level marketing companies, there are so many opportunities within, I mean, within trainings, within life coaching, within business, within every, every kind of area with healing, if you're a natural healer. And, and I guess that the main thing that I think I, that, that holds so many people back from getting started is having an overabundance of choice. Yeah, having an overabundance of option. And I mean, that's, that's both a blessing and a curse. Yeah, like if you know that you want to go out and, and learn, how to be, ha, learn how to be a health coach or learn how to be a personal trainer or learn how to be a healer or, or tap into some sort of healing modality, whether it's a naturopath or massage therapist or something like that, you know, you can start off with that. Go, go play. I think the thing is that so many people get so caught up in trying to make the right choice when there is no right or wrong choice. You've just got to make a choice. And then once you start making that choice, then you'll start to get new information. You'll be able to start doing things. You'll be able to start speaking to other people. You'll be able to start building momentum 
And then you will start to learn a hell of a lot more about what it is that you don't want, about what it is that you do want, and about how it is that you want this business of yours to be able to grow. Now, there is no right or wrong, and, and just because you make a choice today to go and do something doesn't mean that you can't then pivot later on down the track. Now, to give you an example of this, as I was saying before, you know, I, I learned how to be a stylist, and then that sort of evolved into me being all about Facebook marketing. Like that was all I spoke about online and, in, and everything for, for, for moons because that was really where what I wanted to do a lot of, it was what a lot of people were asking me questions about and I was like, okay, cool. You know, like we'll just, it, it's a bit like you respond to what the market's telling you. So long as you're also having fun and that you're also enjoying it, all right? Because I, I did for a long time and then I didn't. Now, I'm passionate, I love marketing, I love human behavior, I love you know, doing these things where, where, where I'm inspiring and motivating and training and teaching on, on literally on a daily basis with a whole range of different people from a whole range of different things. And so, you know, we've kind of evolved again, or well, I've evolved again with what I wanna do. So many people think that the choice that they make now is going that they've got to keep making that same choice over and over again and it's not it's not true the thing that you need to keep doing choosing over and over again regardless of if you're getting started regardless if you're further along down the track is you've got to keep choosing you you've got to keep choosing you you've got to keep choosing to do the thing that, that lights you up, that makes you happy, that makes your soul sing. And if you don't know what that is yet, then that's okay, that's why you experiment. So long as you can deliver on what it is that you have sold, all right? That's, that, that goes without saying, you've gotta be able to deliver on what it is that you've sold. But you've gotta keep choosing you. You've, you've gotta keep choosing fun, you've gotta keep choosing play because Business, now, probably should have put a disclaimer somewhere in the, the, the episode list there. I'm a swearer, so sorry, not sorry. You either like it or you don't, and you know, whatevs. Business is fucking hard, <laughs> all right? It is not always easy. It can be simple, you know, when you've got things set up in a way to have them operating in the best way humanly possible, but it is hard. And so when the, and there are other times where it is not hard, there are other times where it is easy and it feels like flow and it feels effortless and, and that's awesome and it's really easy to keep choosing you and it's really easy to keep choosing what you want in that moment. The thing that most people do is they get started and then they hit a speed bump and then they stop. This is why 90% of businesses, I think it's 90%, I have to go back and look at the stats, 90% of businesses go under in the first two years. They get started and then the going gets tough and then they, then they tools down and I think that's devastating. I believe that every single person has something unique to bring to the world. You've got your own thing. Now for some people, that might be, oh, that was bright. For some people, that might be going and starting up a coffee caravan where you make and sell coffee on a daily basis. You know, that might be the thing that absolutely rocks your world. For some people, it's cooking. For some people, it's being a mother. For some people, it's, you know, creating businesses. For some people, it's coaching. For some people, it's helping as many people as humanly possible with the least amount of effort. Some people, it's healing. Some people, it's, it's training, you know. The thing is, though, is that there will be times in, in all of this, whether you're a parent or whether you're not, that, that, that things get tough. And, you know, I guess that's where the, the building resilience and choosing you and remembering why you're here, remembering what it is that you need to do, remembering why it is that you're doing it is absolutely critical to you moving forward. Now, in my mind, this whole getting started conversation is really for people who have been in business for really for, for less than two years. You know, if you've been in business for less than two years, you're still, in, in my mind, you're still in startup. You're still getting your feet underneath you. You're still 
building momentum. You're still finding, finding your feet. You're still finding your marketing voice. You're still finding your people. So you can have massive success still in those two years, but you've got to get started. Now, something that I want to do, I'm conscious of the time, something that I want to do for you guys over the next couple of minutes is open it up to kind of Q&A. So if you've got questions, please go ahead and type them in. Uh, if you don't have questions, and that's fine. Let me know that this is making sense and we'll sort of, we'll, um, we'll really keep moving through. So the other thing that I want you to think about along, along all of this stuff, like along with all of this, when you're looking at your marketing and you're building out your packages and you're trying to work out the kind of things that you really want to do, please remember that everything can turn on a dime. So long as you are doing the thing that you fully wholeheartedly believe that you're here to do, yeah? And that can change next year and that's okay. We've talked about changing choices and you know, if you didn't hear that part of the conversation, you'll need to listen to the recording and rewind it back and, and go take a listen after it's posted. But a huge part of, of all of this is that it can turn on a dime. Everything can change in an instant. So even when you think that perhaps things aren't working, and maybe momentum's not building as fast as you want and cash flow isn't coming through as fast as you want, please remember that everything can turn on a dime. Now, I wanted to share with you um, a, 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 a little, another little story because you know that's how we, we help people. So in 2010, I went and did my, my style coach training and that was that. So that was, that was in 2010. Now, I, I resigned from my job in February 2011, petrified that uh, I wasn't going to be able to get things moving. I'd left my, I'd left my six-figure job to come out and, and, and do this, essentially, like on my own. And I was petrified that it wouldn't work. I had my planner, I had my list, I had my to-do list, I knew the things that I needed to do, but I wasn't making any sales, I wasn't making any money. I was doing some local consulting. I, I was still growing the jewelry business that I, I told you guys about before. And I, I knew that I needed some help. So I ended up going to this event, this seminar, where I was wanting to learn a bit more about sales. I wanted to learn how to handle people's objections because I fully believe that I can help people. I know I can help people. There is not a shadow of doubt in me at all, I know that that was, you know, I know that this is what I'm here to do. So I needed to, I wanted a way of structuring a sales process so that I could convert people, right? I mean, if we can't convert people, we don't make money. So I was like, right, well, I want to go and learn some more about sales. So I've gone to this event and it was, it was awesome. And I found myself probably uh, six months later. So things had started to work at this point. Six months later, I found myself in a place where I was i was kind of tapped out. I'd run out of one-on-one -on -one time. I knew I needed to do more in order to help more people. Now, some of you may have seen my tattoo. So I just want to show you, show you that. I, I, really, I really love it. Now, what, which is kind of lucky, right? Because it's a tattoo and, you know, only somewhat permanent. <laughs> so what had happened, you know, historically, I, I mean, I'd, I'd been on the phone, I was talking to people and, and um, you know, doing really well. But I was, again, I was worried about leveling up again to the next level. Now, this was all in March 2013. One year before that, I was making no money. I, we were on the bones of our asses. Now, I have three children, and my husband back then works, well, still does, still work for his family farm, but they, um, he was working really hard for, for six months of the year. So out early in the morning, late home at night, I was effectively raising the kids on my own for half of the year. I was trying to grow the business, and things weren't freaking working. That was a year earlier, right? So April 2013, uh, sorry, April 2012, nothing was working for me. It was, I was ready to move my whole family out into my in-laws and, and they didn't understand what it, what, it, what it is that I do. And I, just so that we could rent our house out, make some more money so that I could continue to fund 
the business and, and keep growing it. So we were, you know, we were we were close to, you know, really having to sell the house, nearly not losing everything, but pretty much cashing in on anything that, that we'd, we'd built up. I'd spent all our savings and everything like that. So fast forward a year later, and I was at a, I was, it was in a, in a week long event, I was being coached on how to sell. And that there, I did $118,000 in sales in a week. That was what that tattoo was to commemorate. Now, previously I had done like a hundred grand in sales in a year, right? So to do, guys, that tattoo to me represents 118 grand in a week. This tattoo to me represents, like I, I don't know what it stands for. I, I decided that it stands for courage. It stands for bravery. It's got the three, three circles on there, like the three same circles on there. I, I decided that they're to represent my children, so my three kids. This over here is my husband. And you know, I'm in the middle. There's like a little square thing in the middle. I'm in the middle, kind of like holding it all together. But you know, 12 months to go from, you know, next to nothing to, you know, struggling to really try incredibly hard and, and doing like, I was still, I was still helping people. I just wasn't being paid right to a year later doing 118,000. Now that was there. I've just gone like, right, well that needs to be commemorated. Um, I started, I was playing roller derby and that was my roller derby number. So 118 and to me, I think like what this represents, there are always times where things don't go the way you want. Okay, there are always times when thing gets tough, things get tough. So you might not go and slap a tattoo on your wrist to, to remind you of how far you've come. You might not go and put a tattoo to remind you to keep going, to not quit, to, to not give up. For me, I'm incredibly visual. I've got to have things, I need things around me and that doesn't go anywhere. So when the going gets tough, I'm just like, oh yeah, remember who you are. Okay, so that's my little tattoo story. Now, I'm just going to, oh look, it's like when I go like that, it's almost like a halo. All right, let's see any questions that you guys have. You're very welcome to put it in here. Oh, you're welcome, Gail. Hey, Janome. Hey, Rebecca. Thanks, Fiona. <laughs> awesome. Thanks, Jessica. All right. Any guys, do you have any questions at all? Like, this is your time. Oh, golly. Other than I'm going to have to do something about that for next week. Any questions at all about getting started? Go ahead, type them in underneath here, put them into the comments. Let me know if you have any questions. And I might even just see if there's any that are going on in here that I can. Um, see as well. All right, Janome, I hope I'm pronouncing your name correctly. Uh, when things were so bad, how did you keep going? Oh, that's a really great question. Um, there, there was no choice to me, right? Like there was really, I'm just going to bring this forward a little bit because that way I can probably read while I'm sitting here. Okay. So, um, all right, there we, oh, look, there we go. That's a little bit better. Okay, cool. So for me, there was no choice to quit. There was no choice to give up. I, I was not going to turn around and go back. I didn't want to go and get another job. I, although I would have part time in order to keep things going. So for me, I was, I was willing to do not, not whatever it took, but pretty damn close to whatever it took to get this business going because I knew that I knew that I could help people. I knew that I could motivate, I knew that I could inspire people and coach them to, to be able to move and to be able to get things working, right? So that was that was a big part of it for me. Um, I just, I, I didn't wanna be, I didn't want to go back to a job. I didn't want to be I don't want to live this the, the normal life that so many people live. Now, if that's what they want, then that's totally fine. There is no, you know, you each each to their own, and you do what it is, whatever the hell it is that you want to do. I have no problem with that at all. But I'd been exposed to 
so much more opportunity right that, that it was like it was kind of like i'd been wandering through life with with blinkers on and all of a sudden the blinkers were off and i saw how much opportunity there was out there i saw how much abundance i had i look into what was possible like it's a it's a whole i think sometimes we start to take it for granted um just how lucky we are to really be you know to be waking up to be awake to not just be part of the masses who are you know churning churn, like running the hamster wheel and just keeping going and so for me like there's no way like over my dead body was i going to give up on that so i kept looking for ways to try and make it work but really i think that's where resilience comes in i think i um i read a book recently called relentless which i freaking love and i think that that book explains it really well it's like and and one of my early mentors actually that's another key you've got to get a mentor um one of my mentors laughed and said you know you're just too stupid to quit and i said absolutely freaking lutely i'm like it I'm like a freaking, you know those, you know the boxing dummies where like, you know, you, you punch it and they fall down, but then they get straight back up. And it's like, that's how, that's how I felt I was. I was just too damn stupid to stay on the ground and to quit. Um, and I'm glad that that's how it was. So great question. Thank you. There are no short answers. You guys all um, get, to, get to know that as we roll through. Hi, Ruby. All right, Christy, hey, Squishy. Biggest problem that I'm facing is startup costs and, and hooking in an investor. Any advice? Oh, investors are curly. Um, I would definitely, I mean, there's a couple of things. You can either do some, some crowdfunding and, and raise some capital that way if you uh, like GoFundMe and, and stuff like that can be good. I haven't done anything like that. I, I have no experience in in that at all or in, even in finding an investor actually um, I've heard of lots of people that have I just haven't had any personal experience in it um, which is not to say it's a it's a it's a bad thing or anything I think just be really aware of if you are going to get an investor and if it's outside of a bank I mean I would probably be looking at someone like a like a, a formal financial institution if you're looking for funds that way because you've got control around the decisions that you make within your business Quite often when you've got an investor or a business partner, what happens is like they might agree at the start to be a silent investor or a silent partner, but that's not always how that little, um, how that kind of progresses and how that continues. Does that make sense? So you could certainly, uh, certainly go have a look, go, go have a chat to a bank. You could have a look at, there are some private investors around. Like I'd be looking more for like an angel investor or, or something like that. Awesome. Uh, Rebecca, you have to be 100% committed, which is why I say it's important to find something that, that is ideal for who you are at the time. Yeah, absolutely. And, and that's what I was saying before, right? You, you guys, like you just need to start. Yeah, you just need to start and make the best decision that you can for yourself right now and be okay with the fact that in six months time, it might look completely different. All right, that's behavioral flexibility. That's you learning more about you, maybe not even learning about what you do want necessarily, but sure as shit learning about what it is that you don't want, okay? Uh, Christy, I hadn't thought about that. Yeah, okay, so like here's the thing. If you were going to open up a store, right? If you're like, oh my God, I'm gonna open up the best shop ever. Let's say, let's pretend it's a clothes store or a retail store. Most people don't have half a million dollars in their pocket, and I'm, I'm pulled that number, have half a million dollars to be able to go and invest. So usually what they would do is they would go to the bank and they'd say, look, okay, we need a rent guarantee. We need to have, um, not only do we need, a, we need a rent guarantee, we also need to buy stock. We also need to have a buffer for staff. We also need to be able to have the space to be able to uh, like roll for the first couple of months while things are going. So you would go to the bank, they would assess everything and go, yes, this is a risk we're willing to take, we'll, we'll fund you, or no, it's not a risk we're willing to take and we're not going to fund you. 
Guys, if you're setting up an online business, a consulting business, I'm talking about your own stuff, whether it's running e-courses, whether you're training, mentoring, coaching, whatever, treat, have the same mindset when you start that up as what you would if you were going into a bricks and mortar store. There's no way that you would go and fund that all on your own for most people, right? You, most people would go and find a way of gathering money in order to be able to open up and and um, and go ahead. Thanks, thanks, um, Christy. That's really awesome. Um, Gail, good on you for being so resilient. Thanks for sharing your personal stories. You're welcome. You know, this is it, it's to it's to help you. Like this is why this is why we do this. Uh, how do you market yourself to the world? Where do I start? I have lots. I just have to look at the computer to get the rest of the picture. The, the rest of the question is just rolled off the screen. Um, okay. Oh, where did that go? Where to start? I've got lots of skills and trying to work for myself, but tricky on how to get my name out there. Okay. So in order for you to get started with marketing, you've got a number one, you need to really know who it is that you're talking to. All right, and then you've also really got to know what their biggest problems are and how you're going to be able to solve them. Now, we are going to be talking marketing in one of the upcoming episodes over the next few weeks, so keep your eyes out for that. I can't remember off the top of my head which one it is, but the very, very first thing, and thank you, Kelly, the very, very first thing that you need to know 100% of the time is who your market is, so who your niche or your niche is, you need to know what their problem is so that you can start talking to them. So marketing marketing and advertising are two different beasts, okay? Marketing is this, like marketing is your Facebook Live, marketing is your blogs, marketing are your posts, marketing is how you go and front up out when you're going and doing the grocery shopping. So marketing is you sharing you and and how you are and who you are with your people okay so there's a ton of different resources out there that i've got that you can go trawl through my website um you can go trawling through my facebook page there's heaps of stuff out there but really the biggest way that you can start getting yourself out there is just by start starting to throw yourself out there all right do facebook lives get out of your own way I ran a um, Kelly's on the on the the call, not on the call. Kelly's um, commented in here just before. I spent last week with her and a and a bunch of other people, and I showed them some of my very early on video blogs. Now these like these are embarrassing, guys. Like these were not these were not awesome. Now if you really want to have a really funny laugh at me and see the evolution, go to YouTube and go and have a look at the earliest videos that you can get your hands on. I guarantee you, you will probably need to change your underpants once you've done it because it's um, absolutely, uh, it, it's, it's awful, they're awful. But I was like, screw it, I just, I've got to get out there, I've got to start sharing my voice, I've got to start sharing my advice, I've got to start doing more and, and, and having people see how I can help them. That's really the point of marketing. And, making sure that you're answering people's problems. So this is why today's episode is around getting started, okay? So today, the uh, like it's all about how to get started. I know that so many people have a massive problem with, I don't know how to start, I don't know where to start, I don't know what it is that I need to do, and, and so on and so forth. So that's really why like I know that that's a really big problem, right? So that's why, that's what this episode is. And it's also episode number one. Can you believe it? So exciting. But, you know, in order for you guys to progress through, like, I've got to know what the next problem is that you're going to face. So, Gail, when it comes to your marketing, that's really what it is that you want to be thinking of, okay? So what's going on in people's heads? What are they worried about at two o'clock in the morning? What's the first thing? Like, if they're lying there, in the morning they wake up and like shit you know I've got to get some more clients today or I've, I've got I don't have enough money today or whatever then that's a mindset issue that's a getting clients issue that's a marketing issue that's a sales issue it's a motivation issue it's probably lack of clarity probably some procrastination right there's seven things there um, yeah confidence is a huge thing absolutely right like if they're just thinking oh look I just don't know how to make it happen then guys 
the hell with what anybody else thinks about you. Who cares? There will be people who like you, there'll be people who love you, there will be people who will have not an opinion, there will be people who think you email too much, who you don't, who think you don't email enough, who think you post too much or not enough, or like really, the, the, the absolute best thing that you can do is just start putting yourself out there, start talking to people and, and having a, a, li a little bit of a strategy around all of that. Um, Christy, your Facebook survey is worthwhile in order to gather some understanding of your market. Um, I, I, I wouldn't, to be honest. Uh, people will tell you through those surveys, they will often, you know, they, they whip through them. They're not often right. Pick up the phone and talk to people who you think might be your ideal market. Pick up the phone. Pick up the phone, pick up the phone, pick up the phone, pick up the phone. <laughs> Rhonda, I really love your authenticity. You don't have a presenter persona. You speak real and refreshing. You speak of startup struggles, usually financial and mentoring. Now, uh, so how do you find a mentor that you can afford? Oh, great question. Really great question. And we've got time. I'm going to answer that and we've got time for one more. So if somebody else has another question that you want to throw in, like go ahead and, um, and go ahead and pop that in. Um, I think that the big thing is like you find a mentor that is the best fit for you and then you work out the money. Now I know that finances are a, you're welcome Gail, I know that finances are a big issue and I know for me like back in the day when I was telling you guys before when we were about to move out and had like the bones of our backsides and things really were quite, it, it was really stressful, it was really horrible. I, I found a mentor to talk to and I was on the phone to her and she told me that her program was 12 grand. It was $1,000 a month. Now, I didn't have $1,000 a month coming in. I didn't have, I didn't have 12 grand either, like FYI. I had $1,000 left available on a credit card and $300 in the bank and I couldn't afford her. And, but I knew at that point in time, I knew that she was the best person to help me to progress. And so one of the things that I actually said to her, I said, look, I'm sorry, I can't, I can't afford this. I don't have any money. Um, I'm going to have to pass. And I hung up. I got off the phone to her. She called me back a couple of days later and she fought for me. And I said, well, you know what? I don't know how I'm going to pay you. I don't know how I'm going to come up with the money, but I don't know how I can't, you know, work with you. She, she was really great. And, and I said, well, look, give me 24 hours and I'll chat to my husband. I was freaking out. Chat to my husband and I'll go and talk to my parents and I'll go and talk to my in-laws. Now, my in-laws and I don't particularly get along. Um, they think they thought back then that I should stay in my safe job and just be happy and stuff like that. Now, for me, I to go to have that to have a conversation where I we asked them for financial help was absolutely, you know, that was massive. To ask my parents who back then were not in a great financial position, I asked them for help because. To me, I didn't. I, I knew that this lady, her name was Amber. I knew that she was by far the best person to help me, that it was the right fit, that she was going to be able to take me to where it is that I wanted to go. Could I afford her? Hell no. Could I afford not to work with her? Hell no. So, you know, find someone that resonates with you. Find someone who gets you. Find someone who can, whether it's me or somebody else, like, you know, you guys just, you, you need someone on your team to help you to see what you can't. And the best advice I can give you is find someone that you can't afford, right? Because that you're going to lift naturally as a result of that. I'm not talking about going, going, getting, going broke. I am not talking about um, you know, anything like that. But I am saying that quite often, the way that you can get leverage over yourself is by to throw yourself off the deep end, like throw, throw yourself out of your comfort zone. It's usually the very, very best way of um, you creating momentum fast. Alrighty, great question. Thank you for asking it. Uh, oh look, my girls, they're, they're talking to each other on here. How cute. Hi Ainsley, fancy seeing you here. All right, any other questions, guys, that I can answer for you? We're gonna wrap up. Um, I committed to doing half an hour of these because I didn't want you guys to be um, getting too bored. 
So is there anything else that you want to wrap up or, or go through with me? Let's just see. Okay. The thing that I want to leave you with, because nobody's, no one else has put any stuff in there, so that's okay. The thing that I want to leave you with is this. For me, I didn't want a normal life. I wanted something different. Yeah, I wanted something, um, I wanted a different way. I wanted to show my children that they can make any choice they want. If they want to be an employee, then that is awesome. If they want to start their own business, then that is awesome. If they want to go to uni, that's great. If they don't want to, I don't care. I want them to see that there are choices that um, that they can make and that they can always make new choices as new evidence becomes available. So, you know, that's a really big part of, of why it is that I do what I do. And, and that's a big part of why I keep going. The thing for you guys is that, that I, I really think and I, re I, I truly wholeheartedly believe that the best way for you to get started is just to start and put one foot in front of the other. Just start going and something will happen. And then you'll take another step. And then something else will happen. And then you'll take another step. And you might go, you know what? This entrepreneurial gig, this small business gig, it can, you know, I'm, I'm not interested. It sucks balls, you know? It's, you might just be like, hell no. But conversely, you might be, holy shit. You know, this was the absolute best decision that I could possibly have made and, you know, look at what you've been able to create. So just get started one foot in front of the other and you're never ever locked and loaded with anything that you do. Just have fun, play, be serious and, and take things seriously when, when, it's, when it's necessary, but don't take everything seriously because life is too goddamn short. All right, guys. Mwah. Have a really beautiful day. See you. Love you. Bye. <laughs> You're welcome, Elizabeth. I'll talk to you soon. Bye.